I was kind of disillusioned when I got up this morning at half past eight. I sat up, looked around, and wondered where I was. Definitely not in San Francisco anymore. I got up immediately and went to the nearest window to see the sunrise, and I was completely blinded by the bright, clear blue sky. I was feeling just a little bit grumpy from the sleep deprivation, but the light actually kind of cheered me up just a little bit. I decided to go out to the hall to see what was up outside, and surprisingly there was no one, nothing. After a short, awkward elevator ride, I was finally downstairs. Of course, I was in Las Vegas. And of course I felt hungry, so I took nourishment, taking only my journal with me. Portzel called buffet, that sounds pretty good. And I was the only one, so solo diner, the loneliest number. There was actually a lot of food. And a lot of people. The night before I had flown into Las Vegas, the land of casinos, hot weather, showgirls, a city dedicated solely to the purpose of satisfying immediate and material gratification. But this journey was quite different from the other journeys I take with my parents. This time none of my friends, namely Julius and Serena, were there, and I couldn't help but feel a little lonely. I got myself a nice big plate of food. Oh, that chicken fried steak and biscuits was good. After all, this was a buffet, and then I felt kind of silly for not finding a drink, and I felt even stupider when a waiter brought me one. After breakfast, I meandered slowly out. I was supposed to be at my parents' meeting, but eh, I really had no plan to show up on time, if at all. I even took a walk outside to kill some time and see what the weather was like. It was really, really sunny out, but it was still a little bit chilly. After all, it is winter. I went back up to my room to be with my best friend of all, the computer, her her her, and unbelievably I dozed off for two hours. Having nothing else to do that afternoon, I took a quick dip at the pool, and I came back up into my room just in time to see the sunset. It quickly occurred to me that never before had I seen the sun rise in Las Vegas, I've only seen it set. And maybe this was one of the reasons that Las Vegas is so much more alive at night. Because night is a time when one can truly appreciate the wonders of artificial lighting. That night I ate a simple dinner with my parents at a Chinese restaurant buried in the depths of the casino. I got changed into some nicer clothes, and I finally felt guilty enough to actually go to my parents' meeting for a while. It was really long. Afterwards, I decided to do some exploring. I quickly found this interesting sign that read, Bowling Center. I walked up the escalators, through the doors, and what I found inside really surprised me. Who would have thought that right above a busy casino would lie a fully equipped, large bowling alley? Being low on funds and low on friends, I decided against trying to throw a few strikes and headed back down the stairs. I came across this nice little ice cream parlor and decided immediately that my mouth was a little dry and in need of some stimulation. After browsing the flavors for a while, I decided to go with something nice and familiar, cookies and cream. Even though a second scoop was only a dollar extra, I'm glad I decided to go with the single because it was huge. I was quickly reminded of the chamber choir bonding activity we had together last June, when we went to Ghirardelli Square to get some ice cream. Everyone thought that they could easily finish two or more scoops, but I conservatively decided to get a single, even though the value wasn't nearly as great, and I was the only one who finished. The lesson here? Learn to fight corporate schemes and strategies. Usually when one thinks of Las Vegas, one conjures up hedonistic images of casinos, partying, bright flashing lights, and the implied phenomenon of what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. But my experience in the city of Las Vegas today was very different. Even though all those images surrounded me, I took part in none of them. And in the midst of all the tobacco and the slot machines, I finally realized what it meant to live in a world, but not be of it. You see, our human condition gives us the unique power to choose who we want to be in the world, despite our surroundings. As long as we are willing to look past how other people may view us, as long as we aren't afraid of becoming black sheep, we can and should seek to discover what we alone want to accept and cherish. Unlike those passive slot machines that obey every command their operators give, we must not conform blindly to our environment. The existence of a world in which creativity and innovation rule depends on it.